Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to master a techno track and make it really powerful and full sounding for the club. We're going to be going from this to this. So yeah, to do this today, I'm going to be using this rack down here. This is my definitive mastering rack. This is a rack that I made and released recently. The link to this is right at the top of the description. It's just $5, but with this, it gives you this rack that you can easily just, you know, drop on. And it's got everything you need to master your track in one place. So that you can just kind of, you know, drop it on and get a really powerful master really easily. While still getting, you know, really technical with it and being able to get in and have, you know, the control over it and not have it just be, you know, one size fits all. So yeah, the link to that is at the top of the description. I'm going to be using this to explain all the steps to master a track today. And yeah, so what I have in front of me here is this project file. This is one of mine. And again, if we go, this is what it sounds like unmastered. So I've got it hitting about minus five. You know, usually you want between minus four and minus six. And this is what we would call a pre-master. This is the track. It's all ready to go. You can hear everything's there. It just needs to be a bit louder and it needs a little bit of stuff to glue it together. So the first thing that I do here for mastering is EQing. This is here on the rack you can see it's the sharpness and this boom knob. So what I would usually do is just it looks like this like you would just go and add a little bit of low end and then a little bit of high end. And what's happening here is you're basically just focusing the track and then usually I would also take this and just turn the gain down minus one so that the volume is pretty even with the original volume. But yeah, like I said, you're just taking it and focusing the track. These are the two ranges that you want to be the loudest in a track like this. You know, the high end where you have like the sharpness and the hi hats and your leads and stuff. And then the low end where you have, you know, the fat and low end and really like that deep, like the groove in the track is happening in the low end. So by just turning each of these up a little bit, we just gave a little boost. And like I said, it just focuses focuses the track and kind of you know cleans it up a bit and you can also see on this rack here I have this remove mud now there so something that I like to do also is just take this and cut a little bit maybe around like you know 245 250 Hertz it doesn't really matter to be too precise with that but just in that range and then you just kind of cut like a little bit like that it's very subtle but here's without this and then with it so you can hear it's a really nice way to just cut out some mud in the sound and yeah so then the next thing here is you can see on this rack i have this glue plus fat knob so what this is doing is this is meant to be some saturation so the next thing here would be putting everything through a little bit of saturation at once because when you do this it glues it all together like saturation kind of takes everything that you put into it and helps to like you know, it gives it a more even texture and kind of is gluing it all together. So that's what this is doing. So usually I would do maybe like, you know, plus 4 dB, plus 5 dB, something around that. And then I'll turn the output down, you know, minus 2 usually so that it kind of makes the gain more even. Here's without this. And then with it. So you can hear what that does, you know, it's subtle, but it's really adding a lot to the track. And then we have this compression. So here this is this balance here on this mastering rack. And what this is doing is it's balancing the track out. Typically what I would do is turn off the makeup gain. And then you just do like a little bit. Like maybe that much. Turn the attack up so that it doesn't mess up the transients of any of the sounds. And then we can just turn this up a little. Again this rack will just do this for you but... without it and then with it so you can hear like it's really just balancing out the whole mix and yeah it really like evens it out you know a lot it makes the whole thing feel like 
you can hear each individual element equally. And then the last thing here on this rack you can see is called the push here is to actually add a bit of limiting. So one preface to this is you can see we're not actually clipping. So this limiting here isn't for the sake of just trying to like, you know, save this from clipping and get it to go out of the red. This isn't to do that. What this is doing is it's just going to give us a gain boost and then we're going to push it a little bit over 0 dB. But it's going to keep it, like, it's going to limit it so that we're really just, like, going to be really, like, pulling up everything and making everything just really fat and kind of push together and not necessarily squash, but just kind of, like, you know, balanced out. So what I'm going to do is just start turning the gain up on the limiter. Again, this is this push knob down here on that rack. But there we go. Now you can see this is going to be as loud and it's going to be hitting as hard as a track is supposed to in the style. And yeah, so there we go. That's that last thing that you got to do just to give it the extra little push and not just to make it hit 0 dB either because like, you know, if we turn this off, so let's say we just push this up to 0 dB like now it's hitting zero. This isn't going to be as full and as big as it's meant to be for the style. Like to really make it work and really make it as fat as it needs to be to hold up with professional tracks. You really got to boost it like this. And this is something that I learned like it might seem like you're kind of flattening it out but you're not. It's fun. Like it still has dynamics and it sounds good. But now it's going to really have that like fatness and that fullness that it needs to hold up with other tracks. And yeah, so that is, that is all the steps for the mastering. If you just do these four things, or like I said, you can get them all and more with this mastering rack. It's going to sound pretty full and it's going to hold up with other tracks in the style. And yeah, so that was me for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get my definitive mastering rack. The link to that is right at the top of the description. It's just $5. And it's a great way to support me if you guys are enjoying these videos and want to help me out. And yeah, thank you so much, guys. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.